the sixth year. Because the seventh year, you know, that's the time that things are supposed to be cut off. But he said, look, I recognize that people have a, a problem dealing with trials. So this is what I want you to do. In the sixth year, the Bible says in Exodus 23, in the sixth year, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sow your land and gather in the fruits thereof. But the seventh year, you shall let it rest and lie still. Let the poor of the people may eat and leave the rest of the beasts of the fields to eat. So what that is saying is, see, what happens is God gives us a vision. He gives us a plan. He gives us a word. That's, that's from the beginning. That's the beginning point. And then he shows us to it, the prize. That's at the evening point. So it's up to us from the beginning to the end to get to start at the beginning and get to the end. But it's in the middle point that we get stuck in the six. We get stuck in the six year. We get stuck in the time of trial. We get stuck in the time of waiting because that's when it becomes intensive. God gave us a word 5, 10, 25 years ago and it hasn't come to pass. It makes you start wondering, wait a minute, maybe I kind of missed something here. So what happens is you begin to doubt and you begin to wonder. But what happens is the enemy recognizes, and I'm going to help you right here. When you know that God has given you a word without a shadow of a doubt, God made this promise unto me, and I've been holding on to it. I have been professing it out of my mouth. Death and life, there's power, there's power, there's death and life and the power of the tongue. And I have been professing year after year that God is going to give this unto me. Not only is God listening to what I'm saying, but the enemy is right there trying to wash it out. So what he does is he recognizes when you're at the brink, and you know, this is how you know you're at the brink, when the fire becomes so intensive, when the trials become so much and so unbearable, where you feel like quitting, that's the enemy trying to choke the life out of you. So what, the, what you're going to and this is what I want you to do, when things become so hot, when things become so intensive, I want you to begin to sow. I want you to begin to give. I want you to begin to plant a seed. I want you to begin to give up your resources until it hurts, until you don't have anything left, until when you, you just believe me by faith, and if you trust me with the little bit that you have, when you begin to sow in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your waiting, in the midst of this desert, in the midst of the recession, God will cause the rivers to flow in the midst of a dry land. You can gather every time that you sow. So he said, in your sixth year, in your tough time, begin to sow. Don't hold back on what God can give you. And then get to gather up so when he brings you out and brings you to the level of increase, you are already fully loaded. Tell somebody, let it go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what I like. It was so, so significant about the facts about trials because when you're in the midst of trials, trials, Dr. James let us know that they're meant to try. Trials are meant to help you to endure. And what that is, is that simply is to let you know that you can still function when things are really tight. Job said it, said, said it like this. I know that I'm going through a trial, but it's only to bring me forth pure as gold. Zachariah said it like this. God will take his people through the fire. And I found that to be important. God will lead you straight into the fire just so he can try you as gold. And in order to try gold, you have to be beat. You have to be uh, dealt with. You have to be rubbed upon. He has to work on some attitude. He has to work on your life. Because in order for gold to become usable, it has to go through the fire. In order for gold to become bendable, it has to go through the fire. But I found that when gold it goes through the fire, it will never break. So in the middle 
of Deuteronomy, it says at the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. The, the number seven is very significant because if you look at seven, even in, in biblical, it, it represents completion. The Bible says in six days God created the heavens and the earth, and then the seventh day he rested. That means that when you get to seven, you come into a rest. Amen. When you done fought, you done went through, you done held on, and God said, I'm going to bring you into your rest. Because I've completed with the work I need to do in you, and I've completed, amen, to do the work that you need me to perform for you. You've got to understand that what God is trying to get us to a point is that there is something that we have, that we've been holding on to, and God wants us to release it. Doesn't matter, you've got to release it. If you don't release it, God can never put in your hands what he wants to give you. Right. Amen. You know, you know, it's something. You know, you buy a car, you know, you bought a car, you can buy a brand new car in 2003, but right now it looks kind of old. <laughs> you know, you, you ready for 2009. Right. You, know, so, you know, that's been some years. It was the best thing. You, you was proud of it when you bought it, but as time go on, it gets old, yes. and it needs to be an exchange. Uh -huh. And so when you go to the dealership, what they do, they say, do you have a trade-in? Tell you, you got a trade-in? It's something you need to trade in to God. There's some things that you've been holding on to, you need to trade it in. Now, I believe the Bible tells us that we can take our morning and he'll give us a garment of praise for a morning. And he tells us to trade in. Take, give me your morning, I'll give you something in replace of that. You've got to understand that God wants us to release some things. The thing is, if you look at this, it goes on. He said that you have to release if for every creditor who, who lend has ought to his neighbor shall release it. You know what? The thing is, we hold things over people. That's right. People do something to us and we hold it over them. Uh -huh. Or we give somebody something and we hold it over them. That's right. You remember when you needed and I gave you and I was the one, and I was the one to help you, and I was the one to pay the bill, and I was the one to pick you up, and I was the one. But we hold that over people, but tell anybody you gotta release it. Because as long as you hold that over people, you can't ever get where you need to go because you're too busy holding stuff over other folks. Yeah. Yeah. Say, you gotta release it. You gotta let Sally go. Just like let Sally go. You gotta let the bills go. You, you've got to let Jim Jim Bob go. You've got to let some things go in order for you to obtain the thing you need to obtain with God. The, the, the hurts that you deal with, you've got to let it go. I know that ex husband wasn't that good, but you gotta let it go. If you don't, it's gonna destroy you. That's why I said, let it go. Yeah. Yeah. When, you, when you become, what happens is when you begin to hold on to stuff, you become a pack rat. You ever been on a pack rat's house? Yeah. You go in and you can't get in the bedroom because there's stuff, it's stuff all over the place. You can't get in the house because there's stuff all over the place. And they only got a little pathway that you can walk around and stuff like this. You, you, you can't just walk anyway because there's stuff packed up all over the way. That's what you got You got to release some of that stuff because some of that stuff ain't no good. And even though you ain't been a size 8 for the last 18 years, you might as well get rid of it. You still hold on, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting it, that's my favorite dress, I'm getting it. You ain't gonna get back in it, let it go. It's time to release that thing. That's why I said, let it go, let it go. And the reason why God can't bless us with what he wants to bless us with is because of the simple fact that we hold it on to too much junk. Well, let me help you. I got, I got a little illustration here. See, the thing is, amen, m is, is my favorite, but my hands is full of Skittles. I can never get the Skittles until I release what's in my hands to pick up what I want. And what's wrong is that we, we wanted something else, but we hold it.